après, c'est ça directement. Ouais, D'accord. Ok. There we go. Hello everybody and thank you very much for joining this event from everywhere in the world. Today obviously is an important day for our three companies, Ono, Nissan and Mitsubishi. And it is a real pleasure to share with you what we have built together. Our common future of course and still a unique alliance. We have all been waiting a long time for this moment. I remember mentioning to you one year ago that one should not be too impatient about the structural evolution of the Alliance. But now the time has come. After an intense and comprehensive common work, we are now ready to move our partnership, obviously, to a new era. After 24 years of existence, our cooperation holds its place among the world's automotive leaders. We must never forget. It covers 100% of the major automotive markets. The Alliance Purchasing Organization weighs 85 billion euro in purchases every year. We have already gone a long way in terms of platform communalization. We have made a lot of decisions together, engaging in hundreds of common projects around the world. As you know, 60% of the three companies' models are already on common base and components. The figure will rise, by the way, up to 80% by 2026 and up to 90% when it comes to electric vehicles. Today, we are giving new, stronger perspectives to the alliance between Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi. The architecture of this new deal should be understood as a coherent construction relying on three pillars. First, we looked at all business opportunities along three dimensions, regions, products, and technologies. And we came up with a series of high-value creation operational projects in Latin America, in India, and in Europe. We will go through these projects in detail they are highly value creative. The second pillar of the new alliance is based on a simple and sound principle. The flexibility of each company to initiate new major projects, such as those announced by Renault during their Capital Market Day, and the possibility for the others to collaborate on these new opportunities, not because they are forced to do so, but just because it's good for them. Nissan and potentially Mitsubishi's investments intention in Ampere showcase, obviously, this approach. Another example is the all-solid state battery and autonomous driving, where Renault Group and Mitsubishi Motors might benefit from Nissan's developments. Another one is the software-defined vehicle, where Nissan and Mitsubishi may benefit from Renault's advanced research. Finally, the third pillar of the Alliance comes as a consequence. It is a balanced governance between companies having cross-shareholding participation. As simple as that. The binding framework agreement signed by Renault and Nissan this morning defines the principles of a new governance scheme and the rebalancing of the cross-shareholdings between the two companies. A new agreement will replace the RAMA and will be in place for an initial period of 15 years. Renault will transfer 28.4% of Nissan shares into a trust and will keep 15% direct shareholding in Nissan. This transfer, by the way, triggers no impairment in Renault financial statements. Renault will have full flexibility to sell the Nissan shares held by this trust, along, of course, a coordinated process with Nissan, with no obligation to sell the shares within a specific predetermined period of time. Renault and Nissan will retain a direct 15% cross shareholding with lockup and standstill obligations. They will both be able to freely exercise the voting rights attached to their 15% direct shareholding. All this will be subject to a cap of their voting rights to 15%. 
The voting rights attached to the Nissan shares held in the trust shares will be neutralized, quote unquote, for most decisions. But the economic rights attached to these shares, dividends and share sales proceeds, will still entirely benefit Renault until such shares are sold. We also continue to ensure cross-representation in the board of directors of the two companies, with the same representation level as today. Two board members representing each company will sit at each respective board. The Alliance Operating Board is confirmed in its coordination role, and I feel very honored to chair this important governance body. And now, if you may, I will ask Ushida san Kato-san and Luca de Meo to tell you more about how they see the new alliance. I propose, by the way, that we start with you, Ushida san Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tsanal. Uh, hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to be with you today as we take significant step towards the next level of the Alliance. The world is changing fast, and it is critical for us to look at the way we do the business. Nissan has started its transformation journey with Nissan Next, planned in 2020, during extraordinary times of the pandemic and massive chip shortage. While being resilient, we took a visionary step with Nissan Ambition 2030. This set a North Star for our business. Similarly, Renault defined Renolution and Mitsubishi their return plan. However, we have been facing more challenging and disruptive environment. We need to adapt to the new reality and urgently address the issue like climate change, geopolitical scenarios, raw material hikes, or fragmentation of market. In whichever context, it is true that we can no longer stay still or walk as an extension of the past. We need a next level of transformation. This is not a choice, but a need. Recognizing this, Renault has already stepped up with their next phase of their strategy, and Nissan is working on its next midterm plan and strategic initiatives to support our vision of empowering mobility. The Alliance is a key pillar for us. We believe that the next level of transformation has to happen at the Alliance to adapt to the next era. It is with this spirit that we have been holding intensive discussions over the past months. We are building on collaboration across the Alliance to enable even deeper efficiency and shared expertise in areas such as electrification, SDVs, and autonomous driving. The high value initiatives that we are considering will enable each company to fast track innovation, improve cost efficiency, and add value. Luca will talk about this later, but for Nissan, they strongly support our regional strategies in fast-growing markets such as LATAM and in India. We will enrich our lineup with new models. We will continue to enhance efficiency in our plant. In Europe, we continue to work on significant collaborations. These projects are continuation our existing cooperation supporting our geographical strategies where Nissan is taking the lead in Japan, US, and China, while working with Renault and Mitsubishi Motors in Europe and ASEAN. Another very important area is electrification, which is the core of our long-term strategy. Nissan continues to support customers to adapt electrified mobility However, the speed of electrification and customer acceptance differs from market to market. Also, the regulatory and policy environment is constantly evolving. To catch this momentum, 
we are exploring many opportunities and options, including enhanced collaboration with our alliance partners. I'm happy to share with you that Nissan intends to invest up to 15% in Ampere. We regard Ampere as enabler for Nissan to participate in new business opportunities in Europe, providing new collaboration and generating value. It is also of importance that we maximize our alliance transformation with an efficient structure and enhanced governance. As I mentioned earlier, the next level of the alliance requires a new approach. This will enable the alliance members to prepare for future opportunities on an equal basis. Equal partnership is an enabler of transformation. I'm very confident that this new structure will deepen mutual trust. This will ensure that each member contribute with their strengths and work with shared ambitions for the future of mobility. However, the next level of transformation is not limited to business. To make transformation a reality, we must build a strong culture to support it, a culture of trust, transparency, and respect. We cannot realize the true potential of our transformation without the right mindset. This mindset is important not only for Nissan, but also for partnership to be successful. It is this principle that helped Luca and me to drive the discussions to meaningful conclusions. I'm glad that both of us believed in the importance of this transformation and had strong support of Mr. Sanar. Let me assure you, Nissan will continue to make significant progress to deliver sustainable growth and realize our long-term ambitions. I want to thank all our employees, partners, and customers for your strong belief in Nissan. Thank you for your attention. Yes, it's you, yes. <laughs> Everyone goes around. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to both uh, Renault and the Nissan teams on the new agreement that was presented today. I feel very positive about the new direction. This really fits the rapidly changing environment in the current automotive business, and I'm sure that it will strengthen all the Alliance partners, including Mitsubishi Motors. We at Mitsubishi Motors only have many achievements that illustrate the benefits of the Alliance, such as our new Outlander based on the joint CMFCD, which is already a great success. The new K car, EK Cross EV, which was awarded the car of the year Japan together with Nissan Sakura. I'm confident that under the new framework, the Alliance will bring us further valuable benefits. Mitsubishi Motors has to concentrate a large part of our resources on the market where we have strong presence, such as the ASEAN and Oceania countries. Thanks to the Alliance, we can leverage the expertise of our partners to meet the customers' expectations wherever in the world we do business. In that sense, Europe and North America are potential markets where we can utilize Alliance's assets. We have several projects going on with Nissan and Renault about expanding our product lineup in many regions and market segments. Being an Alliance member enables us to enhance our business, especially for electric vehicle. For example, North America is a promising field of collaboration where we will naturally rely on Nissan to enrich our car lineup. 
Europe is another area for business enhancement, thanks to the Alliance. As you know, we have already announced some OEM product from RURO, the ASX, and COURT. Their development are currently ongoing with a high level of efficiency. And our dealers are really delighted with those products. As a next step, due to the strict emission regulations in Europe, we have not just but study introduction of BEVs. I'm sure that OEMing from Ampere can be one of the very attractive solution for us. I think that Ampere should be a part of our EV strategy in Europe. Considering these points, we will further study our share participation in Ampere. We see the Alliance as a great opportunity for each member company to grow further by using our best skill and each company's market advantage. As Snao-san, Luca, and Uchida-san explained, Alliance will proceed to that next step. I believe that the new framework will bring us further success for the three companies. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. So I actually came in the house in mid-2020, so uh, I sh I sh actually it helped me not uh, to have a very clear and simple perspective on the Alliance. Uh, my priority with the Renault team was at the beginning to fix Renault and, therefore, and then to develop our own strategy. Uh, I always look at the Alliance uh, as, uh, from the business side and uh, I try to push uh, with the team to, uh, to create an architecture of the alliance that would maximize the value for Renault uh, first, but uh, for also for each partners and uh, for all the stakeholders. And I, I consider that uh, what we have agreed uh, is actually a much better setup than uh, what we have uh, had in the last uh, past few years. I like to illustrate this like a three-stage rocket. Uh, on top, you have a, now a new governance scheme that is uh, much more straightforward. We can now operate like a normal company, uh, like any other company that has uh, a cross-shareholding uh, uh, participation. So before we had 43, uh, like Jean-Dominique says, 43.4% uh, without any voting right. Now we have 15% uh, uh, with full voting right, and the same is for Nissan. And the remaining 28% uh, as uh, Jean-Dominique explained uh, is ne neutralized as of today, but uh, we will keep uh, economic rights, uh, including dividends, uh, as long as we want to uh, sell them. We have uh, agreed on an orderly sell down of these shares where Renault can decide when and how to reduce that. It means uh, we have actually also more agility and choice to continue improving the quality of Renault's uh, capital allocation. So the middle stage of the deal, uh, seen from Renault, is about uh, regaining some strategic uh, agility without breaking necessarily the ties and the synergies uh, that were existing uh, and where they exist. Renault has now a clear strategy, as we have explained uh, on the 8th of November, to specialize on the topics that will create the value uh, in the automotive industry of the future. So we decided sometimes to do it with partners, sometimes not coming, even coming from the automotive uh, industry. So you have to see uh, our, let's say, and the deal and our strategy, it's actually a different a complementary concept to, to the alliance that, as you know, has been creating on the logic of finding size uh, and synergies at the beginning. Because the world has changed, as <laughs> Uchida-san uh, said, in 24 years. So, but by executing this deal, we actually can do both. Okay? We can preserve the scale, uh, all of us, but at the same time working on what will make us unique as a Renault, as a Nissan, or as a Mitsubishi. So I want to talk about Ampere for a moment. Uh, so uh, after 
the announcement of Qualcomm investment. Uh, so the investment on Nissan and potentially Mitsubishi, this was a nice surprise today, that confirms the attraction of that project, confirms the attractiveness of this uh, EV and uh, software front runner that we are building in Europe. But you can also look at Ampere as the product that will allow Nissan and Mitsubishi to be in a stronger position, for example, in Europe, than any other non-European uh, company wanting to stay or enter into this EV and software, uh, let's say, race uh, in Europe. And then I'm talking about horse. Uh, Nissan and Mitsubishi will not enter into horse. They are among the, I think, eight customers that we will have right from the beginning, but I can assure you that they will benefit from the productivity gains and the synergies generated by uh, this new venture. So they will get engines potentially at uh, very, very good uh, you know, and improving uh, uh, cost and price. But the po most important thing for me, which has been totally underweighted in discussion in the media, where everything was focused on rebalancing or IP, is that the base of this deal is that we are, re we are reactivating business operation like at the beginning of this alliance. So we have identified, we have quartered, we have planned, and are ready to start initiative that will benefit all companies involved and that might create hundreds of millions in value every year maybe billions if everything works uh, uh, perfectly. So this is a very, very important part of the story that was not told uh, so far. Let me go quickly in some other things. I'm gonna start with uh, Latin America, okay? In Latin America, we will have uh, new uh, exciting projects in Argentina, uh, as well as a new Renault vehicle to be produced in Mexico. It will be the, actually the first time uh, in 20 years, uh, and, and it opens the opportunity for us to enter the Mexican market with local production. So this whole thing for Nissan, for Renault, is about balancing, de-risking, but also boosting operation in Latin America that we know will be one of the regions of the world that will grow in the next years. Then we have India. India is a joint lineup for India and for export with bigger and more technological cars based on Renault platform. It is the, actually the only possibility for us and Nissan to stay profitably in one of the most important markets in the world. So that's another big one. Then we go to Europe. Uh, in Europe, the future N Nissan uh, small car, uh, city car, will be produced in electricity in France from 2026. This car has 80% uh, uh, commonalization with the Renault 5. And uh, because of this deal, uh, we enable a 40% reduction in the entry ticket for Nissan. So a very, very competitive proposal. Again, we said we didn't force anybody to do things. It was the choice uh, of Nissan. Uh, Kato-san mentioned ASX, Colt, to be produced in Spain and in Turkey. Uh, and maybe there are other things we can offer you in the future. Uh, all these plans will boost our capacity utilization in Europe. And very important is also the LCV. Uh, on the LCV, Nissan will buy Renault Group Flexivan uh, range. So this is uh, the first uh, software-defined vehicle that will enter in 2026 20, the uh, Renault range. But there is also project which we never talked about beyond the vehicle, okay? Uh, one, one example is we will double the Renault Nissan outlet shared with the same investors uh, by 2025. Uh, this will substantially increase uh, those investors' profitability and reducing the distribution cost. We will deploy together an EV charging uh, uh, infrastructure uh, in Europe together that will bring us at the level of the leader of, of the market. We were going to engage in circular economy. Renault is actually in Europe a few years uh, ahead of, of the game, has big ambitions, so it makes a lot of sense that Nissan jumps on the wagon, like, uh, for example, putting together end-of-life batteries or the production of scraps uh, in Europe to achieve quickly uh, critical mass. So you see that that deal is, you know, it's just not about uh, changing the shareholding structure. It's a substantial deal based on operational uh, common sense and, uh, and, uh, and, and business intention. So I would like to conclude by thanking all the teams, uh, I want to send out uh, to Nissan and Mitsubishi teams uh, a message that Renault is motivated, 
to engage in this new chapter with the right mindset. So we will be consistent, we will be result focused, we will be generous and fair, as I believe we have been, no, Uchiha san, uh, from our side so far in the negotiation. And uh, to really conclude, let me take uh, 30 seconds to honor Uchida san. Uh, we have been knowing each other better in the last months, and we, I think we, we built mutual respect and trust. Uh, I think that is very important moving uh, forward also for our organization. I can guarantee you that uh, we wouldn't have the deal without him uh, fighting for it. But make no mistake, he has been defending Nissan interest uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, but I found really an, uh, an engaged, uh, knowledgeable, uh, fair and trustworthy partner in him. So thank you, uh, Uchida San, and thank you, Jean-Dominique, for you know, supporting us. And thank you, Kato San, because we make, I think, a good team uh, together. Thank you. Well, there we are. Thank you so much, the three of you. Um, obviously, as you can see, there are a tremendous amount of information behind the agreement that has been signed this morning. And uh, I guess we will be very happy to go through the Q&A question now uh, that I will uh, try to monitor if you accept that. Um, before we start, I, I would honestly simply um, say thank you. Thank you to the three of you. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Shida. Thank you, Kato-san. Honestly, I mean, you have been incredible in the developing the trust that was necessary in such an incredible, uh, important deal. And um, I, I, honestly, with, with all my heart, I have to say thank you, because we have been doing a tremendous work. And if I may, and I'm sure you would be uh, okay with me, I uh, would like to give a special thank to the teams teams are sitting here in front of me, uh, in front of us. Um, they have been doing day and night an incredible work. And um, I have been witness in my life of many international deeds, I can tell you. This one was interesting because, I mean, three companies, two main, of course, were working hard, hard and hard. And we are there with the result that uh, we can now uh, discuss together. It is a real new step for the Alliance. I think it's history. And I'm more than happy to comment that with you and the help of our team here. I would like to open the Q&A question um, and answer session. So it's up to you. <laughs> so I understand there is a, a question here, number one. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, hi. Good morning, it's Henning from uh, Henning Cosman from Barclays. Um, perhaps a first question for uh, Mr. Uchida. Um, if, if we're trying to understand your up to 15% investment in Ampere, um, please could you share how you think about the level of investment? What will determine if you go all the way up to 15% um, or uh, if, the, if the participation level is going to be lower? And then, um, Mr. Senar, I think you said uh, you would go into lots of detail about the value-adding uh, projects. Uh, perhaps you could um, give us a few numbers um, as to uh, what volume of business by when uh, you're seeing in the regions. Um, Luca, you mentioned uh, India. Um, I think that's, that's perhaps a big one together with, with LEDM, if we could get just uh, some more detail. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. So perhaps we should then... Sure, sure. First of all, thank you for your question. And uh, I, I really would like to be highlight again. If you look at the circumstances of the business we are facing, you know, we cannot do the business in extension from the past for the future. And knowing that the alliance strengths and asset geographically... Are we okay? Oh, oh what happened? Is he okay? It's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Can I continue? I should wait. Yeah. Uh, go. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. If we could. I think you can go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, uh, we we need we need to grow and how we can further to make the alliance the next step. Then Luca has announced about his extension of the revolution, where the Renault would like to further make their value up through this ampere. 
As being in a partner, strategic partner we are, we further would like to seek our business opportunity, how we can work together. And therefore, we say up to 15% because this is further to see in the down in the road. We're just talking about the beginning now. And we really would like to have our participation to work together. So that's the how the number was being set as up to 15%. For instance, that uh, having one of the major strategic discussion on the new company, how we can further make our business opportunity to moving forward. Okay, so that, that, that's a full point. Uh, when it comes to the projects, I said that they were highly value creative and I strongly believe it. Uh, by the way, before I give the word to, uh, to Luca and perhaps after to, uh, to Gupta-san, um, I think um, you have to understand that these projects are ready. I would say that they are not uh, just in front of us like a dream. They have been largely discussed within the teams and prepared at the Alliance Operating Board level. So they are ready. Maybe, Luca, you would like to be more extensive and maybe then uh, Gupta-san would have to complement for the Nissan Park. Look, I, I don't, uh, let's say, uh, we, we used in the past to generally speak about, you know, billions of synergies, et cetera, et cetera. Well, then it was very difficult to to trace. So we were not going to fall in the trap of giving you a number today. Uh, but what I, t what I can tell you is that uh, it's, first of all, it's a combination of maybe cost avoidance, uh, not uh, investing twice in the same thing, maybe additional opportunity to get in volumes, margins, because we do, you know, better cars. So it's a combination of all, and it's really sizable. Okay, so it's maybe a hundreds of millions a year. But what is important, they, they are very fairly shared between the two companies. Maybe sometimes 50-50, sometimes 60-40, sometimes 40-60. But that's the way, uh, let's say, we build all the projects. And uh, on, we, we actually picked to make sure that the thing would be pretty locked. Projects that uh, we, ha we can only do together. Okay? There's no way you can do it uh, separately. So at least we are condemned. Uh, to, to, to work, okay? So you, sometimes it's, uh, you know, staying into a market, sometimes it's technology, sometimes it's, uh, uh, you know, a new, uh, uh, an operation in a plant. So it's a combination of all. And you will be able to see and to track the progress of the things based on the success of the project. As Jean-Dominique said, uh, they are actually pretty well defined. Uh, we know how to do. It's not ro uh, rocket science, so it's something that we know how to do. And now, the, 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 let's say, the challenge for us, for the teams, etc., would be to execute them. Okay, so we need to go back to work, get out of discussion with legal people, etc., and come into the operation <laughs> and uh, and uh, and execute one after the other. But I think we are, we have all the ingredients and with the right mi mindset. Also, the team, so locally, they, they can, uh, we have already proved that we can deliver. So that's what I can say uh, on the thing. So, and it's not only Indian Argentina, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's many more things. Okay, well, maybe uh, Ashwani, would like to take the word from, on this project? You're fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Luca. I think, as Luca said, I would summarize it that in the high value projects, uh, synergy is not for synergy, synergy is for performance of each company. Um, some to start with, I think we will be coming up with the numbers uh, in few days, few months for different kind of projects which we are going to do tomorrow, uh, together. But just to give you uh, the magnitude which we are talking about, um, for example, in Latin America, which is roughly now a five million uh, global auto market, uh, for example, Nissan is only there with one SUV and one pickup, but we are going to cover from A segment uh, till the full uh, till the fun, uh, one ton pickup thanks to the exchange of products between the, between the two companies, and not only products, but also the manufacturing plants. For example, in Mexico, where Nissan is number one for the last 11 years, Renault will get the opportunity to use Mexico uh, manufacturing plant of Nissan as well as the product, and this is how we are going to exchange uh, the business between the, between the two companies. In case of India, which became the third largest market, uh, with roughly 4.7 million and going to 6 million very soon, with a 27% growth. Uh, definitely after spending uh, 12 years uh, together with Renault and Nissan in manufacturing facility, in R&D center, in digital center, finally we are going to come up with a very, very pragmatic uh, lineup 
focusing on SUVs, but also talking about the electric vehicle. And there also we are going to maximize our assets. So these are few projects which, uh, which Luca said. I think there are multiple projects in the pipeline. And as and when we are ready, we will be sharing with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ashwani. I hope thank that you. helps. Uh, <laughs> and probably so, if I can say, I can add, uh, w repeat what I said before. We, since a long time, we haven't worked together on such a sizable uh, project. So that's everybody has to understand uh, this. This is a very important part of the story. Right, for sure. Thank you. Okay, maybe then number two here, then don't worry, I'll come to you afterwards, but yes. please go ahead. Thank you, it's Jose from JP Morgan. Uh, we have a question for Luca. Can you maybe uh, split a little bit more the, the framework uh, that you have, that you're contemplating to sell the stake in Nissan? What are the key variables that you're thinking about and how do you want to proceed? Do you have a time frame uh, for, for that? And then for uh, CEO of Nissan, I'd love to understand a little bit better, how are you evaluating the investment in Ampere? Which key variables would you like to see from the investment project uh, to take the step to, to invest? Thank you. So uh, the way we dealt on the, um, let's say, and the spirit behind the idea of uh, creating the trust and then agreeing on the procedure or the proceeds how to do it was obviously not to impact <laughs> uh, Nissan negatively. So I think we, we will do it in an orderly, in a good faith, we will do it on an orderly manner. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, uh, let's say, negotiated with uh, with the Steven and, and uh, you know, on on how to do it because it's no aggressive intention into the thing, but it will allow us to monetize, uh, you know, a, a big amount of money that we can use on uh, on other projects because you don't need to trap so much money to make the alliance work mm -hmm. because that's that's basically the story. Uh, so it's going to be gradual or we have some thresholds and we also have agreed on the concept of an acceptable uh, shareholders because we are not here to, you know, intrude the governance of, uh, of, of Nissan. We have to do it, uh, you know, like a good partner. So, but the good news is, uh, of course, that we did it in, uh, in, uh, in a, on the, with the proper spirit. But the good news for us is that we can, we can kind of monetize this. And I think it's important for us because we have so many let's say, ideas and projects that we want to run that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that money could uh, come forth. I, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue of weeks or months. It's going to take some time, uh, but it's okay like this. I mean, uh, you know, the direction is set and, uh, and that's what we're going to do, try to do uh, professionally and in a collaborative uh, spirit. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Luca. Maybe, maybe I can would like to add a little bit more because uh, as I said in my speech, the purpose is not the rebalancing. The purpose is how we can make ourselves much stronger in the next stage. And in order to enable that, the governance or that opportunity as a Nissan to do our also the uh, value up is important. As what Luca is doing for the Ampere. Uh, if you look at the many enterprises today, they are doing the order transformation. Why? because it is very urgent for the automotive industry to transform and how we can make the company to the value to be much higher. And really, really would like to support what Luca is doing. If you talk about the revolution, he is moving the step by step how to make the Renault value to be increased to meet with the market needs. That's the main point. And in our side, can you imagine like a Nissan in five to 10 years ago, we used to have a global standard model of the business that could be probably appreciated in the US market, China market, and Europe market. But if you look at it today, let's take example of the electrification. As I said, market by market, different speed, different regulation. Then we have to make our value through that uh, history or future under such circumstances. So therefore, we felt would be very good business opportunity for us to do unpair with a strategic way. So that's the reason how. Of course, how do we go on the next stage? We will have, when the time comes, we would like to further to explain, but that is how we started to discuss, because me and Luca started to discuss from what? The last May, to talk about the next era of the Alliance, and how do we want to set ourselves to transform? It looked like more time. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, I agree with you because uh, I'm, I'm probably talking with you much more <laughs> than longer time than my, I, <laughs> my family, by the way. But, but that, that is how we are doing, and, and that's very important. So I, I was a bit more emotional to saying because the Alliance always have this respect 
And we have to put everything transparent. We know what is the history, what we had on 23 years. Then how did we want to work for together to make the company, to make our value to be much stronger? That is the, one of the most important yeah. things I really would like to address to everybody here. I like your word, uh, Shida-san, when you say that uh, rebalancing was not the purpose of the deal. I mean, that's very important for everybody to understand that it's a catalyst, honestly, because uh, the business is the focus, really. And uh, if I may just add something, I mean, at last, um, we're going to get rid about misinterpretations, which obviously has, uh, I mean, made everybody busy for so many months. Uh, without any real purpose. So now all that is behind and we are just living now a very normal, simple legal situation between partners that want to work together for the next 15 years and more. And it's so much simple that way that I think it will tremendously help the business, which is basically what we want to do. So thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe on number four, I, I understand that's the next one and then I will be back. Good morning. Yes, uh, hello. Peter Campbell at the Financial Times. Two questions, if I may. Um, Luca, you're going back into Mexico. Does that mean one day you might like to go further north into the United States market? And a more general question on projects. Uh, this is not the first time we've heard about the Alliance working together. Often, uh, hmm. the problem has never been that one company invested in another or there were shareholdings, but the fact that it's very difficult to get teams from two different companies to work together on the ground. I wonder what today's announcement does to help that issue. Yeah. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, you really can yeah, speak Yeah, I out. mean, uh, I think that, uh, let's say, uh, we, we, it's actually not in the plan to imagine, uh, uh, let's say, Mexico as a platform for us to go to US. That's what uh, Nissan does, okay? So we are more looking at uh, the way to use Mexico to kind of balance uh, Latin America, so that you can play on three or four countries like, you know, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, then you have something. It's a very volatile market, very risky somehow. So the more you are, you can put, uh, you know, different eggs in different baskets, the better it is. That's the, the, the spirit of the thing. It's actually very competitive and uh, uh, Nissan is very good there. So we just have to find the right product and the right platform to do it. So it's, it's not like uh, completely so we'll have to discuss uh, mm. I'm not going to do things if uh, just because I have to do them or it's announced into the thing I'm going to do that because I make money on the thing it's a very simple concept okay uh, so it's it's still a work of the next uh, of the next uh, let's say months and, and and weeks but we have it pretty clear uh, uh, let's say on the on the way on the potential let's say on the way the thing the system will work uh, I think that we need to, and this is also another discussion we have to mm. do with, uh, with Ashwani, with uh, Uchida-san and the team, is we have to re-engineer the connection between the two organizations, right? Uh, so because uh, the, the old spirit of the thing at that time was, uh, or the last years, uh, maybe last years, no, but in, at a certain time, uh, was to actually converge the two organizations to have one company. But actually we realized that it doesn't make sense, right? So it's much better if each company does, you know, the best for, you know, optimal thing from themselves, get organized, because if we do a good job, there, are, there will be opportunity to cooperate, okay? That's the thing. So we have to re-engineer. I think there is a possibility to do this around the five or six things or, if, or the project. So of course we, we have to reinforce uh, and maybe restructure on the purchasing side if necessary of if uh, let's say maybe we can optimize but it's a platform that is very strong and uh, and works we probably have to work on the innovation and techno roadmap uh, discussion for the future ips etc etc mm. and how to do it and then we have the opportunity on the projects okay to actually give uh, really responsibility to each other to actually execute the thing right so uh, you know, we have to design a, a project-driven uh, organization rather than mixing up like uh, pizza quattro stagioni, everything together. <laughs> That's not what we want to do. Uh, so I don't know, Ashwani, if you want to make a comment on that one, but uh, because as a, it's a very operational as a CEO, uh, if you want yeah, to, I think just it will lend be the a microphone. No, thank you, uh, thank you, Luca. I think um, uh, Peter, your question is what will change. Um, I think. Um, one thing which we are changing for sure uh, 
is to not have a business relationship based on buyer and seller agreement. Mm. Um, we are changing the business relationship into um, profit sharing schemes <clears throat> uh, because the moment each member of the team is convinced that there is a performance in it, then we don't have to worry. So as top leadership team, what we are doing is to build a system, a process, a governance, which will convince each and every team member that this project will bring the performance to their company, which means once again, synergy is not the objective, synergy is the consequence. One of the example, I think in the last um, Alliance 2030, we talked about the compact EV. Nissan almost decided to exit this segment. And, and when uh, uh, Luca proposed uh, 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 the Renault car, uh, and he himself, I remember the sketch he made for me, that Ashwini, if you are able to do this uh, compact car in Europe, fully electric, based on our this product, this will be an iconic model for Nissan. And, and this proposal came in, and we were able to convince our designers and our teams that this is, this is the product which Nissan is looking for, which can be an iconic product in Europe. On the other side, when it comes to whether this business will make sense or not, not to start with the conventional way of uh, discussion, or I would say negotiation, going into what value it brings to Renault to share the platform, to share the plant, and what value it brings to Nissan not to invest in the compact EV and use that. I think that's something which we are changing and which we are going to change for all these high value projects. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Asmani. If I, if I may, because uh, if you look at the alliance in the past, that we had some very strong challenge in terms of the volume, right? But look what happened to the Nissan in the past two, three years ago, right? We, under the Nissan Next, we shifted our self quality of sales. We want to have a value to be provided to the customer. We want the customer to have the good acceptance of our vehicle. So what's important now is how we can make sure to create the value, which also enabled to reach to the business in terms of the profit. And also we do have our responsibility for the society as well. So world has been changed. We need to wake up and we need to transform ourselves to different way of the business. And that is what we are going to do in the Alliance. So we would like to further to show you some proof point later or when it comes to time, because we need to have this kind of mindset to be changed. We have to get out of the some typical way of the working because the world is changing. And that's the most important. That's the reason why we have in this whole discussion together, the partnership, to look back what was the way and how we want to go the forward together. I think before we get to the question two, uh, Kato-san, maybe on this point, uh, the partnerships between, uh, you had a word in your text. Yeah, maybe okay. Like uh, to... Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, of course, uh, as a Mitsubishi, uh, we don't have a so long uh, history of Alliance member uh, compared to the uh, Renault or Nissan. And, but uh, uh, so far, uh, we have been uh, involved in the several projects, but uh, uh, during the, uh, for example, like uh, AOB, I know that, you know, uh, so far uh, there are a lot of difficult and uh, a bit compli complicated discussion was ongoing. And, uh, you know, I, I also felt that uh, it looks a bit difficult. But uh, under this uh, new uh, agreement, I think that uh, uh, we are going to the next step. And uh, uh, for me, it looks that the alliance will be more flexible under this uh, new uh, framework. And also, uh, it will be open and uh, uh, much more free to everybody, including uh, Mitsubishi Motors. So this is really welcome for uh, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Motors too. And uh, I like to have a, a more a close relationship uh, with two company to have uh, a more collaboration. Thank you. Okay, then thank you. So perhaps number two now in the in the room, waiting for some time. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Please. Um, first question is for uh, Mr. Uchida and Mr. Demel. Uh, as there have been many discussions on IPs during the negotiation, uh, what's the conclusion or agreement two companies have reached so far? And is there anything like uh, Runo has to ask for Nissan's permission to use Nissan's IP? Yeah, I think. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, the second question is for uh, Mr. Demel. And uh, how do you estimate the market value of Ampere? 
And is Reno going to keep the majority of share of Ampel after the future IPO? And uh, I'd like to know what you think about the uh, market environment of today. Thank you. you. Want to start with that, or yeah, I think uh, I can start with the market environment as, you, as usual, complicated. <laughs> but uh, I think in the case of Renault, we feel like uh, uh, because of the let's say of what the work we did in twenty starting twenty twenty, uh, we entered the year with a very solid uh, let's say order bank, uh, and we're getting new cars coming, the Austral, the Megane, that are really let's say pumping up the business and we enter 20 end of 23 2024 with the new wave of products i mean remember that renault and all his brands will launch uh, 25 cars from now to 20, 2025 so i think we will be pushed and we have the potential to be anti-cyclical and we have we have put the house in the right order in terms of cost etc we will continue but uh, i think uh, I'm relatively optimistic, but we are not naive. I, we know that the environment is complicated. You have recession, we have inflationary pressure, et cetera, et cetera. But what I can tell you that in the last uh, two years and a half, the Renault team has been uh, used to fight very tough battles. So we're not scared about you know, challenges in, into the business. Uh, so that's to answer the, 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 the market value of Ampere. That's not me that decides that. Is the market that decides that. And uh, the only thing we can do is actually put enough uh, substance into the project uh, so that the market will recognize and the investors will recognize the value of it. I feel that when you are creating something that might, uh, you know, sell a million electric cars in Europe, uh, that uh, might achieve, um, you know, 25 billion uh, uh, turnover, double-digit profitability with the very efficient manufacturer, all the technology in two platform, uh, six model plus some of the models that will come, for example, from from the partner plus Alpine, uh, you know, software-defined vehicle, centralized electronic architecture of the new generation, a very strong distribution already in place, retail financing already in place. I mean, there are not many examples on the planet of uh, EV software, let's say, focused organization like this one. So the investors will decide. I cannot fix the price. Uh, I can aim. We have some estimation, and but uh, I don't think it's, uh, it would be fair for me to share that kind of uh, information. Then I leave it to the IP, which was, <laughs> be, became one of our favorite uh, <laughs> topics. Yeah, I always get surprised every time I see a lot of the IP on the newspaper. But you know, when you talk about, let's talk about we had 23 years of the working together. Mm. We have a lot of a co-owned asset in the company and our partner is making a transformation. And we are, of course, discussing in a common sense way, how we're going to help the IP to be treated in the right manner. So it's not only the Nissan, but also the Renault, mm. and it's going to be the same discussion. So it was a good moment that we have been able to discuss that because again and again, I go back with the past 23 years. Now we want to transform the way we're going to work, collaborate each other for the next year to be competitive. That's the key for us. Then in order to do that, we need to look back at all the things, not only the IP, how are we going to further to work on the project basis as the question was raised, how are we going to collaborate on a new area like the Ampere we are talking about, and how does the governance enabling that things. So it was a very huge change from the past and the future. Why we are doing that? Because we want to grow. And under this difficult circumstance, we cannot do it, again, I'm telling, hundred times same word, we cannot do the extension from the past way for the future. We all know that. Therefore, we are transforming. And that has taken a lot of a good discussion. I'm very happy that now we came to this moment. And now we have to prove to the world how we can further to make our value to be enhanced. We became uh, IP PhDs. <laughs> on the thing yeah. Uh, I think that, um, let's say, let me say two things. One sure. is a clear message is uh, with the discussion on the IPs, etc., and the deal that we made, I think we, we can execute all the projects that we have in the plan. So that's, uh, you know, should be reassuring for everybody. So the Ampere, the horse, the Alpine, all the things that we have into the thing. So that's, uh, and we'll have the techno bricks and the access to what we need to do to execute the project and to show to the market that this thing, all the projects have substance and value, okay? Mm -hmm. 
But one thing that we learned, in a way, and this is important to understand, is that the whole IP uh, setup and uh, the whole IP discussion, the, the, all the way the things were shared, etc., was actually not completely structured at the level of granularity that is necessary in a, in a partnership uh, between two uh, global companies, at the level that is required. Okay? So by discussing this, we actually revised the way IP will be regulated, we probably solve a large majority of the legacy IP discussion, and we have now clear rules on how to handle future IP creation. Okay? So that means that we had to go into the operational, into, into the OS of the house, and reprogram, recode some of the things. But now we have a base that we know it's much more clear, uh, transparent for the future. That's the benefit also of this very, very painful <laughs> discussion on the thing. We have a system now that works. Yeah. So good, the good news is, I guess, that we can talk less about IP now than we have <laughs> yeah. in the past. Because honestly, um, legacy is now behind us. This is good. OK, I think there's a question here from an analyst. Yeah, it could Thanks be your head. Yeah. It's uh, Daniel from Bernstein. Uh, Luca, maybe for you, compared to the strategy you presented last year, are we kind of adding something to the strategy? Do we meet your expectations concerning the alliance, or is there more room for improvement? And then maybe for Katosan as the, let's say, a little bit less involved party here in the uh, governance realignment, what would be your message to the owners of Nissan and to the owners of Renault, um, why they're not getting a bad deal, why this is a good deal? So what's the upside kind of for, the, um, for some of the shareholders or stakeholders that may feel the other part is getting the better of the other? So kind of your message as a third party in the room. Thanks. <laughs> You want to start first, or you no, want no, to think no, no, about? No, please, it? please, okay. <laughs> you speak no, first. I think I think I mean very bluntly. I, I think that my priority is to actually execute the strategy of Renault. Okay, and I expect the same thing from Uchida San and uh, and Kato San. They have to care for their house and the, and and their strategy. But when we when we do it right, there will certainly be opportunity of co of cooperation. So I see the whole alliance story, uh, not as the final end of the thing, but I treat that as an opportunity. Based on business, pure business logic, we have identified already things uh, that are very sizable, 100 millions, billions potentially of, of, of value. So we will take care of both things, which is the strategy of Renault, I, and I will make sure that uh, uh, with all the Nissan team and, and Mitsubishi team that we can execute one thing after the other, tan, tan, tan. But as I said, that's operation. We know how to do it. No science fiction. Uh, so, so that's the way I see it. And, you know, uh, maybe I say it a different way. The, the, the alliance w came to a situation where, you know, was kind of based at a certain point on a culture of compromise. So one, one would say yellow, the other would say red, and then we would do a lot of orange. <laughs> but it's always a kind of a suboptimal thing. And I believe that everybody, you know, he needs to make a very nice uh, uh, red. And, uh, and I have to do a, transform yellow in gold. And when, when you see the gold, maybe you buy. You, you, you understand? So that's, that's a new spirit. And even a good, healthy, healthy, positive competition okay, between the teams to bring on the table of the negotiation a better solution, I think it's good for the companies, mm. between engineers, between design, between commercial people, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think it's important to, to foster that kind of uh, eye to eye, healthy competition between the organization, not compromise, because there is someone that say, you got to do it. You say red, I say, the other one say yellow, no orange, no good. Okay, so that's, the, that's also what this deal allows us to do, which is good. Okay, uh, from me, like uh, very simply speaking, uh, I'm very happy to hear that, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, both company uh, came to the conclusion uh, this time and uh, find out a new direction. I know that, you know, our two companies, uh, including the both teams, were working very hard for around more than six months, one year. Mm. Yeah, and uh, finally he came to the conclusion. So then, uh, uh, very frankly, uh, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Uchida-san and Lucas-san and both teams. And uh, as I told you, 
uh, with this new agreement, I think Alliance will be much more flex flexible than before. And that is also uh, bring a benefit, uh, valuable benefits to Mitsubishi Motors too. And as uh, uh, Uchida-san or uh, Sanao-san said, uh, currently the automotive environment is very uh, difficult, and uh, like a lot of regulation and uh, carbon neutrality and electrification. And it is uh, obvious that uh, you know, just uh, only by uh, one company, uh, we cannot survive in this uh, very difficult uh, moment uh, uh, to uh, the time. Then uh, uh, after this uh, new framework, I believe that uh, we can uh, uh, enlarge our uh, uh, effective collaboration more in many regions. For example, like in Europe, uh, we are now looking for the new EV. Uh, definitely, I need EV in uh, Europe. Probably we can take uh, some of the EV from uh, Renault or maybe from Nissan. Right now uh, we are studying, but uh, yeah, it's obvious that uh, you know, uh, this new agreement gives us uh, uh, much more uh, possibility uh, for the future. T take the Renault is better. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an uh, attractive <laughs> price. <huh? laughs> okay, well, thank you, Kato-san. Uh, never forget, you, will never, you are not and you will never be a minor partner of this alliance. Please keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, I think we need to move. Um, thank you. I guess it answers your question. Uh, there is number I put number four. Is, is there number four first, and then you to you, the gentleman. Sorry, please number four. Hi, it's Stephen Wilmot from the Wall Street Journal. Um, two questions. First, uh, for Ukida san do we have a time frame for the new uh, Nissan strategy? And um, also, your implication with the whole. Um, regional pace of EV development thing was that there's no benefit from global scale in EVs, which the success story in EVs would seem to point in the opposite direction. I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on how you think about a global EV strategy versus this need for a regional approach implied by your investment en pair. Um, and then for both um, Ukida san and um, Mr. De Mayo, can I just ask, what are you, how, how are you measuring the success of the new alliance internally and externally? <laughs> okay, so maybe we can start from the second question, that how do we measure internally? Well, from, as far as the Nissan is concerned, first of all, I'm very happy to reach at this level of the stage as Luca mentioned, and then also Kato-san mentioned, how we can be, have the flexibility to make the opportunity of the business necessary for the, each individual company. So that is allowing the, this way of the deal for the, each company to make such opportunity of the business. Uh, I always go back again to the past way of the alliance working. I'm not criticizing those. Maybe those way met in that generation or timing, but we should not be talking from the consequence about the past, right? Then how are we going to equip ourselves for the future is the most important point. And I'm very proud that today we have been able to announce how we're going to work together for the next future in the Alliance. And I'm very proud that to be explained to our employee, because we have been waiting for this moment, how we can further to make the Nissan value on our designated market of the portfolio. And that goes to your first question as well, when it comes to the electrification, that it is very challenging. Each market evolving at a different pace, and there's a regulation evolving at a different pace, and there's a customer acceptance evolving at a different pace. So again, if you talk about five or 10 years ago of the business scheme, and today it's totally different. We need, we need to make ourselves to make time to market, design to market on the each designated area of the portfolio of the business we have. From that perspective, as Katos mentioned, it's very challenging to do it alone, rather how we can maximize the alliance asset that we have today, or my partner moving on the future as to ride for our business opportunity. That comes also for the electrification. So that's what we are all discussing today. 
And I really would like to make those to be, you know, enable us for, from the Nissan point of view to make our presence in each market of our value to be demonstrated. And when you ask about the next midterm plan, we are still on the Nissan Next. When the time comes, we'll be ready to announce our Nissan strategy in the right time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So answering to your question, how do I measure success? I think it's very simple from our side. It's a return on capital employed. So my, my responsibility is to allocate the capital that is given to me to the right project. So that's uh, that's the criteria we will use to, to measure the success of the of the Alliance initiative. They are in competition with others that we're doing, but uh, but I think in many cases we have a pot when we do it in two and, th and three, I think it's a big chance that we can have uh, roses that are very good uh, on the Alliance project. It's very simple. Yeah. As simple as that. And by the way, the the criteria uh, of the follow-up of these projects will be monthly, I would say, at the uh, Alliance Operating Board. And they will be seen and analyzed and clearly coordinated. So that, that's another way to ensure what Luca just said. Okay, um, I guess now it's number two. <laughs> at last for you, sorry, I've been a bit long. Thank you for taking my question. I'm Yoshio Arima from okay. NHK. Um, I'm asking an additional question about the possible 15% stake in Ampere of Nissan. So, Chida-san, um, is it enough stake uh, for <laughs> Nissan to have a certain influence on the new project with uh, Luno? And also, yeah. I'm, I'd like to ask lucas that that um, it's a possible 15 person stake with a certain condition just according to Nissan's decision. Do you think it's uh, really passive or too cautious behavior for Nissan for your very important project of EV? Thanks so much. You want to answer or you want me to answer? You can start first, I think. Uh, you, you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, those are, those are, I will hear to you first. <laughs> I know. No, but, but honestly, again, um, we felt of course, Ampere uh, is now created as the plan for the Renault future, right? And as we go along, we are discussing what could be our strategic partner level. Then we came to the number of up to 15%. I'm being very honest with you on this discussion because we want to have a strategic discussion and that will represent the 15% as the starting point of what we discuss. But as we go along, of course, there could be many kind of discussion may happen. And of course, knowing the Nissan situation today, that initially started of the discussion was up to 50%. I don't know whether I'm answering to your question, but uh, after look, I can elaborate even <laughs> yeah. if you have more. I mean, look, I, I think that for me, my responsibility is to make Ampere project uh, strong attractive enough so that uh, Uchida-san and even Kato-san may, may say, okay, that's a place where it's worth putting my money, okay? So I'm in competition probably with other projects that, uh, that Nissan has. Maybe they will come with a kind of similar, slightly different idea and they, they would give priority to their project because it's more, uh, you know, there's more return for, for them. So my focus is Let's try to make a proposal, as we did, like for you know, with the uh, small car platform, etc., that is so attractive that they can't refuse the thing. Right? So nobody's forcing uh, Nissan or Mitsubishi to enter Ampere. I think it's nice, you know, to do it together because they have cars into the thing. They might, by, by technology, use plants, etc. So it makes a lot of sense. It's his decision, the level of influence he wants to get into the thing, and it depends on the amount of money he will put into the game, right? But you will have to decide if it's money well allocated as a CEO of, uh, of, of, of Nissan. And my job is, uh, is to make sure that this is a very, very attractive thing. That's the way we see the story. We, we need to make an Ampere strong proposal. We have a lot of arguments. We need to keep uh, you know, some floating into the thing if we you know looking at an IPO, et cetera. So, and because on the other hand, Renault, and it's very important, will never lose a majority on, on, on the Ampere because it's one of the, you know, 
a core project of the future of, uh, of Renault. So if you are above the 50% and then you have, uh, you know, um, you know, internal anchor investor, uh, you know, in investing 45%, there is nothing for the market and then it doesn't make sense. So I, I think we need to find the right balance. Mm. And I have to propose uh, some good uh, deal to Uchida-san where he decides where to put the bar or, or Kato-san. Yeah. I, th I, think I think it's fair. The, sh the showcase, one of the showcases of this new alliance, uh, and one point is for clear, uh, Renault will clearly keep a uh, substantial majority in this uh, Ampere company. So everybody knows that, by the way, and it's quite, it seems quite normal. So, uh, so we're looking forward to this uh, combination there. Mm. Uh, back to you on this side. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you so much for taking my question. It's Harold from Morgan Stanley. Um, congratulations on this agreement. Uh, it feels like we've been waiting a very long time for an agreement like this. Um, and, and it's very nice to see you looking forward and operational as much as you are today. So hopefully, uh, you know, we wish you a lot of success with the new projects and things. Um, unfortunately, can I take you just back, you know, to what we've experienced from, from the analytical and the investor community over the last 15 years or so? Um, the, the group has a huge number of different stakeholders, um, as you know better than I do. Um, can you confirm that today, the framework agreement that you have, you know, all of the framework work agreements in place are satisfying all of those different stakeholders? Mr. Sanara, yeah. you probably more than anybody has, has the yeah. experience of, of all the different stakeholders, and I don't know how you can speak for them. Right. But, you know, can we now hopefully get rid of some of these newspaper articles that we get every year, every year, every year, every year. Can, can we get rid of that? Is, is that all satisfied or are there? No. Are, are, do, you, do you think there are still parties who are still not satisfied with the agreement you've made today? Thank you. Well, I'll be very, very candid with you. Uh, um, first, we would never be standing in front of you if I was not totally sure that all massively the stakeholders of our different companies are okay. When it comes to Renault, I'm of course, well placed to say that that is the case. The French state, because you're talking about the French state, uh, is behind the deal, has backed it completely, and it has even been uh, publicly stated by the French head of state. So, I mean, that's clear and neat. And I have to tell you that, again, I would not be standing in front of you here if that was not the case. So be, be, be reassured that that is the case. When it comes to the Nissan stakeholders uh, and Mitsubishi stakeholders, you're better place for me than uh, to, to speak for that. But my feeling is that uh, you may still have a few spirits that are lost in the past, if I may say it that way. But uh, there are less and less. That's my view. And hopefully they will completely disappear. Okay? That will be uh, probably, uh, I would say, a relief. So there we are. Is that all right for you? Yeah, that, that is perfectly fine. But if I may add a word of that is that we talk about the equal partnership. And that will bring the opportunity of the business for the each company in line with the strategy we are doing. So it should be appreciated with our stakeholders because we cannot be as is. It will be not enough, right? So how we can maximize our potential way of the working in the alliance to make the body up of each company, then that I believe that's what stakeholders are looking for. And, and that is our job to do that. So again, I'm very happy to make this framework. Then we really would like to demonstrate to the world how individual company first to get their value and the growth on the each respective market and how also that makes the alliance to be elevated to the next level. To be competitive is the key word I guess. Thank you. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Wow, where are we now? Um, is there, is there uh, a hand raised? Yes, perhaps, your gentleman, I can see you. I guess there were no others here. I'm like in an auction, you know, I'm trying to find out who's going to pay. Thank, yeah, you, for, Thank you for um, taking my question. Um, I'm Shinya Wake, uh, Shinya Wake from the Asahi Shimbun. Uh, uh, the question for uh, both sides. Um, to Bruno first, um, I understand that uh, by this uh, rebalance, you have made a big step forward with the uh, Ampere plan. That's a good news for you. But um, there's a big but uh, between the relationship as um, in general, uh, if you bring down the uh, shareholds, that seems in general um, weakening of the ties, not threatening. And 
So please let me get it straight um, by asking you this bold question. Isn't this a start of the end of your relationship? And if you say not, how could, I ex uh, how could you explain what you can do and what you, cannot, uh, what you can do from now on, which wasn't, uh, you couldn't do uh, um, with the 40% stakes? Mm. And let me add a brief uh, question to that. Um, are, have you or will you um, ask the Chinese car maker Zhili to uh, get on board with the Ampere? Mm. And a similar question to Nissan. Um, um, so I like, I like your idea that this couldn't be a f um, purpose and it should, should ha you have to make the means of this to achieve the purpose. Um, but it's still unclear what you can do and what you cannot, that which was you couldn't do uh, with the 40% stakes. And how, so how are you gonna make um, the advantage of this um, rebalance and the equal relationship in your mid and long-term uh, strategy. Thank you. Okay, I start. So I, I have the feeling that you're entering with the, not with a question, with an opinion. It's your opinion. Um, and that's a different thing. So let me try to answer to your concern or to find, to, to share my opinion on the thing. So. First of all, we are making the connection between the rebalancing and Ampere. There's nothing to do. They are on the two different stages of the thing. We don't do Ampere because there is the rebalancing. We actually announced Ampere and we we're working on it since a year and a half. Okay, so there's nothing to do, right? We probably, I have to say, uh, not, let's say, we don't need the money to do Ampere. Ampere is financed, most of it, okay? Uh, everything we're doing is potentially is to accelerate beyond 26, 27, the growth of Ampere because we are still, you know, deciding on next generation products and having, you know, resources will help us. That's a, that, that's a story. So no connection between rebalancing and Ampere. Just to make it clear to everybody, to make it simple, Renault is not moving from 43 to 15. It's actually moving from zero to 15. Because in that 43.4, there was nothing for us in, okay? Uh, we, I mean, the, 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 the contract that was signed was absolutely no influence into, in, into the system, right? And same thing for Nissan. Unfairly, I have to say, uh, you know, in the past when Nissan had 15%, could say, couldn't say anything at Renault. Right now, so both of us, we move from 0 to 15. It's not that we move back from 43.4 to 15. Look at the thing in a little bit of a, a positive way. And when you are 15, 15, and you are a normal company, normal shareholder that can vote, can, can you know, vent his opinion, I think the relationship is completely different. It's much more uh, balanced, and I think it will help the, uh, the operation. So for my part, I think I have... Uh, I have uh, uh, let's say, uh, answered. You asked me about uh, uh, the Gili story. Uh, I think Gili uh, will, uh, it's actually, the whole story started in Korea, where we really had an issue uh, to fill the plant. So we found someone who would give us a, pr a platform that would be adapted to the local market to actually save a plant with a lot of jobs, thousands of people working, very, very good people, very motivated people, and we had nothing to do. Renault was in a crisis, we didn't have the resources, we didn't have the, the plug because, you know, Korea has big cars, et cetera, et cetera. So we had to find a solution, and the relation started like, like this. And then, uh, as we had the urgency in Europe, more than in other regions of the world, to find a solution for combustion engine business, because you have a, you know, 2035, uh, combustion engine ban, uh, ban in Europe. So be, in, unsta instead of waiting for 20, 31st of December 2034 and then say, Whoa, I have a problem, we are anticipating the thing and trying to play a game of synergizing our assets to, get, to gain productivity, to get maybe resources to develop a, a range of uh, engines that will sell uh, everywhere. Uh, you know, 130 countries, if I remember correctly. So this is the old classical game of synergies 
and, uh, and de-risking from a business that in our uh, territory, in our perimeter, has a different dynamic than it has in China or the US, etc., etc. So please understand that they were the partner. We actually asked to Nissan, and Nissan says that they are not uh, interested in, in that for the time being. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> and so we, we had to do the thing and we did it. So, but don't, don't try to elaborate more on this kind of ties. We have a very good relationship with Geely. It's a very, very good company. We are not planning to get Geely to enter into the Ampere perimeter, just to ask for your, your question. But uh, we have to already now to develop the Korean project. We need to uh, develop the horse, which is already a lot of uh, you know, heavy burden on, uh, on the teams uh, to make it operational. But I think it's a very, very good thing for us. Yeah, yeah then if I could add, so <clears throat> probably your, your comment is like, so if we become rebalancing, the then Nissan may kind of walk away from the partner. I don't know, probably that could be the one of the sense you said. But again, I would say it's a totally different because we are going to have more opportunity for the future, right? But if you, again, I, I'm always trying to tell this, but seems to be it was not being accepted. Maybe my way of the explanation is not enough, but the world is already making the fragmentation of the market, right? Then again, how we can make our value of company to be demonstrated in each market? Can we continue to do in the old style of the way where that we used to be? The answer is no. And do you want to further work with a partner? Answer is yes. And that is the reason why we are doing this. And that I'm very sure this would even to motivate each of us and our employee, because we have a lot of opportunity that we can do with this. We don't want to be talking about Renault's, you know, big, share holding to the Nissan, vice versa, all the past things that we had to face it. I mean, let's not talk about the history or past. Let's talk about from today to move into the future, what could be the best for the partnership? And I would like to emphasize, can we do it everything alone? The answer is very challenging to do that. Therefore, we are making this deal, which enable each of us to maximize of the, all the good things we're doing from the past and to make those to be a next level. And in order to do that, what kind of setup or governance can make each company to have the opportunity as we can use the word normal company. And I think this is a normal company. Then how are we going to make our opportunity also from Nissan perspective? He told me that the Nissan has to make our strategy, yes. And Renault has their own strategy. Therefore, he went with the Ampere and the horse which to make his company to vary up. And we also have to do that. Mitsubishi also has to do that. We are not in an old way. We have to do it in a new way, knowing that all the circumstances of the business that we are facing in the world. So hope you will be taken as very positively. And we are proud of starting of today. It's still starting for me. And how we can make sure that to be demonstrated to the market is the most important for us. Yeah, and uh, can I, if I can add, sorry, but I think, you know, uh, the alliance is kind of an old marriage, no? You had, uh, <laughs> you had up and downs, uh, you know, we had uh, dark, dark times, but we also had good times. So we already demonstrated that the thing could work at a certain time, and then the down. So we have been working together the last eight months to open a new, more sunny uh, time for, you know, for, for the cooperation. And I think that, honestly, the, the best way to answer to your question is that to demonstrate that all the projects that we are getting in are successful. So it will take time, uh, next months, years, et cetera, et cetera. So the best re response to your question is, let's go back to work yeah. uh, and, and execute one, one of the things, one after the other, and maybe this question will not come you know, anymore in uh, three, four years' time. Well, I'm sure it will not come any longer, you know, because if I may just add before we Thank go you to, for the, the trust, uh, <laughs> to, the, to the last question <laughs> online, I just want to add something, I mean, just to conclude on that point. I was the first of all these gentlemen to discover the agreements in which we were living. I can tell you it made uh, the real pleasure of legal people, which I admire and respect, because honestly, it was almost understandable for nobody, okay? 
um, myself, I took some time to try and understand, and I qualified this situation as strange, to put the, to the minimum. And in the past four years, I spent my time in my mind thinking that the status quo was not possible for the future and we should get rid of that and go away with a normal situation. So please understand that I could very well understand the Nissan, Nissan situation having 15% of a company without voting rights. I mean, the frustration is obvious, isn't it? I mean, it's human, isn't it? It's not even business. But everybody forgot that Renault, on his side, had 44% of a company without a say, without a vote. And I was sitting there at the General Assembly at Nissan in Tokyo without a word to speak because actually I had no legal right to do so. Can you imagine? So please forget about all that. These frustrations are behind us. That's the past. Let's not get lost in the past, as I said. Now look at the future. We have normal companies, normal links, clarified, simplified. That's it. Please. I will go to the last question, perhaps Pierre-Yves Kenmer, I'm still on the mic, is that all right? Okay, and that will be, sorry, the last question. Yeah, good morning, do you hear me correctly? Right, yes, go ahead. Hey, thanks, thanks for taking my question, and hi to everybody, I've got two actually. Uh, first one is a follow-up on Ampère. I'm surprised that after this quite long and detailed negotiations process, Nissan's investment in the future EV software division of Renault has not yet been finalized. I guess my question would be, what would be the, the remaining roadblocks for Nissan to invest? What is the timeline you have in mind? And in any case, will it be done before the planned IPO of uh, Ampere? And second question would be um, on the trust, where uh, it's going to be segregated the 28.4 percent that uh, Renault owns in Nissan. Uh, what is the planned use of funds when the trust sells down uh, a fraction of the to of the entirety of, uh, of the stake? And has anything has been planned at this stage to reward Renault shareholders? Thank you. So. Okay, so I think I that uh, on the on the first one, uh, I mean, it's 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 actually on the Renault's uh, team uh, shoulder uh, because we will have to execute all the process uh, looking at the right. potential IPO. So at the right time, there is no roadblock. It's just that we have to do the job right now and and go through all the steps that will uh, get us to to the to the event. And at the right time, uh, we will of course share numbers uh, and uh, and plans uh, to to Nissan and Mitsubishi in case uh, they like uh, you know to participate uh, to, to to this uh, uh, to this project it's very simple there's no there is no uh, let's say no mystery into into the thing uh, in in terms of uh, the trust i think we have as i said we have organized a, a very you know a very orderly process to you know, sell the shares at the time uh, when you, when you want. Uh, when let's say when you want, we want. How do we want at the speed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is no urgency for for the thing. And uh, when it comes to how we what we're going to do uh, with the, potentially those resources that we will have to monetize one day, I think there is no urgency, uh, as I said before, because the plan. Of, uh, of Renault with all the guidance that we gave to 25, etc., is uh, is pretty solid and and and, and finest. Uh, let's say w m some of the projects that uh, we have agreed uh, with Nissan and Mitsubishi will make me even more comfortable about the fact that we will achieve the guidance that we gave to the thing. Uh, so I think that uh, in case we would monetize. Uh, this at the right time, in the, at the right condition, it's probably to accelerate the project to go beyond 2025. This is mm. basically the story. And when it comes to the shareholders, uh, please uh, uh, remind two things is, uh, f you know, for a long time, uh, uh, since many, some years, uh, Renault, uh, let's say, now is making money. So that's good for the shareholders, uh, for sure. Uh, I think the dynamic of the stock is uh, relatively uh, positive. And uh, Thierry, on the 8th of November, Thierry Pieton announced uh, that uh, 
we, uh, let's say, have decided on a dividend policy, uh, which is very, very clear. So we would move up, up to 35% of our, of our results. So that's the reward we are giving to our shareholders, is just simply doing the right job to make money and to give a part of, of this money back to our investors, to our employee through the uh, share plan, et cetera. So that's the strategy that we have. Okay. Thank you all. I think it's time now to uh, close the meeting. Um, really, thank you so much. I hope that uh, the questions and answers session has been uh, useful for everybody. Last year, at the same period, I remember we had the first sort of uh, public discussion. Uh, remember, it was the end of January. It was digital. Now it's at least in presence. There will be others because I'm absolutely sure that now regularly we should be able to uh, give to you the information related to what we just said. So you need to, be, to have a feedback, a regular feedback, and I'm absolutely sure we will create that, all of us, I'm sure. Uh, until then, take care. Thank you so much, and uh, we're more than happy to meet with the others and one and others in the coming uh, minutes. Or, okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.